we must either say yes or no. These are very two simple words, but they hold within them tremendous possibility. They are very, very powerful words. Today, we remember a yes. And then we remember that we suffered the results of an ancient no. St. Mary said yes to the will of God. Our ancestors, Adam and Eve, they said no to a command of God. And so this act of rebellion against God and one of his commands, it didn't hurt God. It didn't add or take away from God himself. He has no need of us or, in fact, our obedience to him. So this no didn't take anything from God, but it took everything from us. What was taken away from us by the act of a no could only be returned to us by a powerful act of yes. The most important of these is the yes of St. Mary to the message of Archangel Gabriel. We might say to ourselves, what's the big deal? She was being honored by God. What's so difficult about that? But the truth is, her yes was also a burden. What was the burden? She would be pregnant without a husband. She had just been betrothed to the elderly St. Joseph, who had taken her under his wing as a father figure, and now she would accept to be pregnant. In the days of St. Mary, it was often the case that a woman who was found pregnant out of wedlock might be stoned or killed. And it was considered a great offense, especially since the times of, of the law of, of Moses. Her yes to God might have meant her life. And later on, her yes meant that she was displaced from her home and hunted along with her own son. It meant that she would live for years as a refugee and an alien in a strange land of Egypt. Sometimes, Saying yes means suffering greatly for the name of Christ. Thousands of martyrs of our holy church remind us that oftentimes our yes to God is kind of like a death sentence. When our heroic men and women and children were asked if they would worship idols, they said no. When they were asked to deny their faith in Christ, they said no. When they were asked to affirm their beliefs in Christ, they said yes. They took this all the way through suffering and tortures, even to death. In fact, it is this faith that confirms the reality of Christianity alone because the disciples suffered and were murdered for their belief in their yes to the risen Lord. They would only choose to say yes if it was true. We have come to a time in our country, I believe, that we better be ready to say yes and no when it matters. We have come to a time when we need to be prepared to give an answer when it's increasingly inconvenient to do so. When we are increasingly risking our way of life and our jobs, our reputations, our friends to do it. There's many examples of this. We should say no to the idolization of the sexuality and the ways that has been twisted in our culture. We should say no. We should say no to a, a sacrificial culture that says sacrifice everything, including our families, only for the pursuit of success and wealth. We should say no. We should say no to the endless distractions of prayer. 
We should say no to the endless excuses that keep us away from the church. We should say no when a coworker or a classmate uses the name of Christ in vain. We should say no. We should say no when we are told to compromise our values or our morals to do our work. We should say no. We should say yes to everyone who asks us if we believe in God. As a priest, I have a privilege of wearing the cassock, the galabea. There's no denying it, right? Some people are confused. They don't necessarily understand what's going on there. But carrying the cross of Christ, it's very clear. I don't have that burden that I don't need to shy away from my faith. It's very clear when you see a priest. Hopefully. But for everyone who asks us if we believe in God, we should say yes. We should say yes to, a, to loving everyone, no matter what their political or ideological slant is. That, that's a yes. We should say yes to Christ and that he is the only true way to know God. And that we should live as if we really believe that. We should say yes and acknowledge God daily, no matter what it might cost us. St. Mary's yes was done selflessly and with tremendous risk to herself and even her child. But this yes made it possible for Christ to become man and to say yes to his father and to go to the cross for us. This selfless yes led to his death becoming our only hope in life. His yes became a universal yes for all of humanity. One woman said no to God and yes to herself. The other reversed this course of nature by reversing the response of humanity. She said yes to God and no to herself. And the secret becomes evident in her life and in the life of everyone who says yes to God is that when we say yes to him and allow him to do his will in my life, we're actually not saying no to ourselves at all. This is the twist. In fact, we're finally living up to that purpose for which we were created. We become exalted by God to a very high state. And this is more true with St. Mary than any other human being that has ever lived. We see this of all places in the book of Revelation where St. John the Beloved was, uh, he was writing these words. He said, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them into the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was, all, was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up by God, unto God, and to his throne. This is read in Revelation chapter 12. God exalts her because she humbled herself and was obedient and said yes to him. What about each one of us? How will we answer this high calling that's put before us? I think human beings have always had this irresistible urge for greatness. Rarely do people wake up and say, I want to be completely mediocre. I want to be average. We should desire to be great. Great husbands, great wives, great friends, great children, great students, great co-workers, but ultimately, great children of God. 
This is actually a command of us. We are meant to reflect the greatness of God himself in our lives and in our work. And this doesn't mean that we will do everything perfectly, but that we continually strive for perfection and greatness. So what is the criteria of greatness? Our Lord tells us very clearly, whoever does the commandments and teaches them shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. That's it. Greatness is found in obedience to Christ by his teachings and encouraging others to obey the teachings of Christ. This is the key to greatness. According to our Lord, greatness isn't found by learning to argue with others. Greatness isn't found by joining various causes of the day. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is concerned with our repentance. It's concerned with the forgiveness of sins. It's concerned with leading a life of righteousness and holiness. These are the attributes of greatness. We recognize and commemorate the multitude of the saints because of their willingness to desire to follow the teachings of our Lord and to teach others through their words and even more so by their example. Our Lord reminds us that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they, say they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in the heavens. Do we appreciate who we are and what our role is in this world? Your role isn't yours to decide. You were bought at a price. Your life belongs to the master. Your role is simply to be the light of this world. We are to reflect the light of Christ. We're so worried about what the world might think of us. We are so eager to fit in with classmates and coworkers. We live to be liked. We aim not to offend. We just want everyone to think highly of us. But in truth, that isn't our path. The path for saints is the path that makes us seek the acceptance of God. The acceptance of God before anything else. St. John Chrysostom once said, If you are a Christian, no earthly city is yours. Of our city, the builder and the maker is God. Though we may gain possession of the world, we are but strangers and sojourners in it at all. We are enrolled in heaven. Our citizenship is there. Let us not, after the manner of little children, despise things that are great and admire those things which are little. I'm going to say that last line one more time. Let us not, after the manner of little children, despise things that are great and admire those things which are little. You are the light of the world. You became light when you were illumined by the teachings of Christ and put on Christ in your baptism and chrismation. You now carry the light of Christ with you at all times. Sometimes the light that we carry is a tiny, barely lit wick. At other times, the light that we carry is enough to shine light on everything that we are near. Our ability to be the light is a reflection of our love of God and the teachings of the only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to share another word from the saints. One of the great modern saints, St. Nectarios of the Eastern Church, he said, Christians, have we understood the great responsibility that we have taken on before God through baptism? Have we come to know that we must conduct ourselves as children of God, that we must align our will with the will of God, that we must remain free from sin, 
that we must love God with all our hearts and always patiently await union with Him? Have we thought about the fact that our heart should be so filled with love that it should overflow to our neighbor? Do we have the feeling that we must become holy and perfect children of God and heirs of the kingdom of heaven? We must struggle for this so that we may not be shown unworthy and rejected. Let none of us lose our boldness, nor neglect our duties, nor be afraid of the difficulties of spiritual struggle. For we have God as a helper who strengthens us in the difficult path of virtue. St. Nectarius reminds us of what is really important, which is the kingdom of God that we seek. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us that he tells us what it will take for us to be considered great. There is, there is no thought for greatness in this life. The greatness of the world looks like foolishness to men. There is no doubt that the greatness of the kingdom of heaven looks like foolishness to the world. Since that is precisely what we will see with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Greatness through obedience, humility, greatness through sacrifice, greatness with surpassing love. Let us remember our, the words of St. Paul. He wrote, in, he wrote for, his Christ, for Christ's sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. To me, one of the greatest examples of greatness is seen in the, in the reflection today when we think about the yes of St. Mary. So to conclude, all of what I'm saying requires patience. This world, it wears us down. It wears us down with distractions and shiny things. And we find ourselves living in pleasure and comfort. And it's really easy for us to get complacent and to get negligent in our duty. But the church teaches us that we are to continually live our minds and our hearts directed towards God. You belong to Christ, and your life can be a witness to God's goodness and love. Your life can also be a path and a conduit of grace and healing and salvation that God can use in the lives of many others. What is required of us is to trust God with our lives and our most prized possessions, such as our minds, our time, our attention, our children, so that he can bless them and return them to us. Notice, I didn't talk about cars or house or bank accounts or any of that stuff. And so God has not ceased to bless us with his dedication and his faith and his love. God exalts St. Mary because she humbled herself and was obedient and she said yes to him and his will. What about each one of us? May we live firmly in our faith, in the spirit of obedience, as children of the one who is the source of all good things, and may God give us the grace to do so. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.